Hey, what's up, fellas? Doing something kind of interesting today. Getting ready to do a precision solder job on this control panel. And we're gonna be using something called propane gas modification. Now, you guys have seen all of my acetone gas modification videos where I use this acetone infuser and an electrolysis torch. I don't like to use the word HHO because that's just a huge pseudoscience community that I am not a part of. And this is a oxyhydrogen torch basically. And I'm gonna go ahead and fire this torch up with the acetone infusion for some of you who haven't seen it yet and show you that flame. And then we'll talk about the reason for me moving to the propane gas modification for this specific job. Because they each have their own place the only difference is, is the acetone is not as good at making very small flames. And we'll take a look at that. All right. Here we go. See, we can see that. So this is the acetone flame. This is great for brazing. One of the best flames for brazing you can get. If you know anything about the acetone copper reaction, you know what I'm talking about. I'm going to turn this down to a small flame that I could actually fit inside a control panel without blowing everything up. And we'll see what happens. That's about as small as you'd want to get it. Anything smaller than that, you don't have enough heat to solder fast enough to not damage everything. As you can see, that's a pretty big flame. Big, stupid, lazy flame. So, the acetone just isn't suitable for the job we're about to pull off here. You want to start off with propane for sure. That removes the possibility of a flashback pretty quick. Okay, so that's about how much propane I want to use for this process. We've got a lot of sodium in there. I don't have a good enough washer on there. I don't know if you can see that micro tip inside of there, that little inner cone. It's usually not this yellow. We have got a lot of sodium. Yeah, and we're not able to see that inner cone. You may be a pastor and you think, well, now study behind anybody's name and make them adequate to do the work God's called them to do. I'm going to turn this down a little bit more even. Some of the features of this flame. And you've got this oxidizing inner cone for, it may be a reducing flame at this point. And I from the back, uh, flashback. Oh, let's turn it off this way. Oh, that's cool. That right there is like a 15 amp turbo flame. Check that out. Essentially, we just had 1500 watts passing through this cell. And when you do the math, when you have 1500 watts passing from one plate to the next, at three volts, which is right around the area this thing runs at at that level, three volts per plate gap. That comes out to 520 amps of Faraday power we had being put to work doing electrolysis. Even though we're only putting 20 amps AC into the diode array, this thing acts like an electrochemical transformer. A lot of people have disputed this claim that I've made and say that I don't know what I'm talking about, but I assure you, based on my experience with making single cell electrolysis systems, that there is definitely 520 amps worth of electrolysis power taking place in this dry cell. That is why these things are so effective. That's why they're so much better than wet cells, because of the ability to act like a transformer. They're just like a battery. When you put a bunch of cells together in a battery to equal the voltage that you're using, um, a car battery 
This battery right here is essentially the same thing. That's a 600 amp battery right there. So to say that, um, and it's only 1.2 volts per plate gap, but yet in between every plate, 600 amps must pass to deliver the wattage that these things are rated at. So that's just one of the interesting attributes. I'm gonna shut up and get back to the subject now and we'll hook up a smaller tip. And uh, I just wanted to show you that that flame we were just looking at was 520 amps of electricity at three volts. Okay, I've got another tip hooked up. Try this again. I'll turn this light out again. Well, we'll see how it looks. Ain't nothing worse than looking at a video in the dark. I'm gonna turn this down just a little bit. I want it to look about like a Bic lighter. So that's at uh, Bic level. I'm gonna have to turn this thing down lot there is actually a black jet inside of this thing I know the camera ain't gonna be able to see it I'm not gonna even try that is a beautiful flame I bet you can't see it though not like I can um, crap iPhone can pick up on it. We'll lower the tone. Okay, as usual, it can see it. It just won't focus. It has horrible focus. That right there is pretty much what I want. It's somewhat of a needle flame. Hopefully that's hot enough and it's not as lazy as the acetone flame, which was just causing a lot of problems trying to get in that little small spot. I'm going to do a little test. No damage to the wood below. It can definitely damage the wood below. But uh, when it gets on that pipe. So I think this little bad boy right here should be able to sneak in there and hit those joints for us. Okay, here we go. I'm going to show you one. And then I got to get you out of here. I got to get this job done. You got to go. Here we go. I'm going to go in, get this thing hot and soldered as quick as I can. We're on the bottom. We're heating it up. It's taking a lot of energy and we're flowing. Can't get this other side. Okay, I think it's all the way around. While the heat's traveling, we're gonna go to the top. We've got quite a bit of time. Man, she's flowing like water here. So we got plenty of heat on this little flame because of this process. We're able to get in there and we're able to add heat and we're able to take it away the second we want that solder to stiffen up. I'm gonna cool everything down, wash the flux off. So there you go, fellas. This little turbo flame right here is a beast. I know it's small, but the amount of power that's packed into this thing, right now we're pulling five amps out of the wall. So, and we've got a little bit of propane added in there with it. Let's um, take a look at the flame. Let me show you how much propane is in this mix. I'm not gonna show you how much hydrogen and oxygen is in this because I'll explode. So I'm gonna turn off that. And we're gonna go to just the propane now. Boy, is that getting scary. Just adding a very small amount of propane to that gas. The reason I can't show you how much oxyhydrogen that was is because the orifice size is very small but not small enough. It would probably backflash on me. It wasn't very much. Probably about three quarters of the size of this flame is how much oxyhydrogen it was. But uh, anyway, I just wanted to share that with you guys to show you how the propane gas modification is even superior to the acetone for two reasons. 
You can get into tighter spaces. We would have never been able to do that in the time you saw using the acetone infusion. In addition to that, I believe, oops, <laughs> that the temperature of this particular gas formula is hotter than that. So there you have it, fellas. Gas modification. It's uh, something that I've been doing for years. And it's just, just like, you know, your oxyacetylene. You know, everyone raves about that. But you know how expensive it is to run that? And what happens when you run out of gas at 3 o'clock in the morning? This thing runs on electricity. And I, I never run out of propane at 3 a.m. for some reason, unless it's in a big bottle. I always have another one on standby because they're so cheap. I just buy two. And um, when I get down to one, I usually buy another. But uh, for the most part... This rig is just a work in progress. I'm gonna rebuild it one more time. After all these years, I finally figured out exactly the way this thing needs to be configured to work just the way I want it, the most convenient. It works, but you know me, I'm always tweaking things. So I'm gonna shut up. I gotta get this thing on the road here. We've got two more of those high-speed solder joints to do. So I just wanted to show you that for very delicate and precision soldering. Propane gas modification is the way to go. Um, I don't know how hard it is to hook a torch this small up to an oxyhydrogen tank, but I can imagine, or I mean a oxyacetylene setup, but I'm pretty sure it's not very cheap. I think the regulator alone is like 200 bucks, and um, the gas bottles and all that jazz you you know what it's like to do that and if you've owned a system like that i highly recommend you make the switch to this it's so much better than using acetylene and oxygen because typically when you're doing work that's that small think about it do you really need the extra beef of the acetylene if it's a small flame you're doing a small job which requires a little bit of heat acetylene is for those big jobs it really is. You really do not need acetylene for a small job. So why people aren't just using propane on these small torches, it, maybe I've just never used acetylene on a small torch and I don't know what I'm talking about, but I can cut steel with this. So if you can cut steel, I think you're about as hot as you need to be. How much hotter could you need it to be? Okay, so we're in, we're out, we're done. The job was a success. Maybe not the prettiest thing you've ever seen, but it won't leak. Now what we're gonna do is work on these flare connections and we are done, dude. We're connected. I left this whole thing springy the way I have. You see how I got these loops in the, um, the coils? See here, we've got a big old loop that comes down. The purpose for that is so this thing's somewhat spring-loaded. I'll be able to press this down in place now. Let me get you zoomed back in. We'll be able to press that in place, but yet I can still pull it out and get wrenches in here to fix stuff. It's not the prettiest technique, but um, if you've ever chopped open a human body, man, is it a disaster. There's just stuff strewn all over the place. You may be a pastor and you think, well, now I study and I pray and, and God gives me a message and I just get up and tell it. And you ignore the Holy Spirit? You're not relying upon Him for wisdom. You're not relying upon Him for courage. You're not relying upon Him for inspiration. You're not relying upon Him for motivation. You're not relying upon Him for interpretation. You're not relying upon Him for power. You're not relying upon Him for authority. You cannot do what God has called you to do the way He intends for you to do it apart from the Holy Spirit. That's who He is. That's why He came. There's no substitute for the Holy Spirit. You can't put enough PhDs, THDs, RFDs, any other kind of Ds behind anybody's name and make them adequate to do the work God's called them to do. 